Okay, this is scenario two of your notes borrowed. It happens to be page 211. And um, again, we're going to do a two sample proportion. This one's a little bit different than the one before, but um, very similar. So 80, and this is a little trickier. So 84% of a simple random sample, oh, there, that's important. Simple random sample of 125 nurses express job satisfaction. So this right here is going to be my end. Um, working the 7 a.m. Um, to 3 p.m. shifts, while 72% of a simple random sample of 150 nurses express satisfaction working in the 11 to 7 a.m. shifts. Establish a 90% uh, confidence interval for the difference. So what are we looking at? We're looking at uh, E equals the, so we're looking for the uh, day shift versus the night shift. So let P1 equal the true population proportion of satisfied nurses. working the day shift. All right. So, and then P2, let P2 equal the true population proportion of satisfied nurses working the night shift. Awesome. All right, so what do we know? Well, we know P hat one equals, um, in this case, 0.84. And we also know P hat 2 equals, in this case, 72%. Uh, now, what we don't know is we don't know um, X. Well, remember, it's X1 over N1. Well, we know, so we don't know X1. We know N1 is 125. And we know this in two is one fifty. If I multiply eighty four and one twenty five, and by the way, this is really important. You have to hear me out. If it ends up being a decimal, you're going to have to round, right? But in this case, it's not a decimal. It's one hundred five. So we know when I multiply these two, we get X1 equals 105. We're gonna need that. That's super, super important and it's a bit tricky. I have to do the same thing here, 0.72 times 150. And it also has to be a whole number. So N1, X1 and N1 have to be whole numbers and X2 and N2 have to be whole numbers. And again, you're probably going, how did he get that? I just multiplied. 0.72 times 150, 108. 84 times 125, 105. When we run this, I'll show you what happens if you use a decimal. If you use a decimal, it won't work. So this has to be a whole number. So you always have to round to the nearest whole number. All right, our conditions. So we have to do conditions for both. So conditions for P1. They told us a random sample of 125, so I'm going to write that down. Random sample of 125 given. All right. And on P2, I have to do the same thing. Conditions, P2. random sample 
of, in this case, 150. And that was given. All right. So check by that. Then we have to do N1 P hat 1 and N1 times 1 minus P hat 1. Now remember, these have the hats because we're working with the confidence intervals. All right. Well, what is that? In this case, we're going to go, huh, that's what we already did. We just checked this out up earlier. We went 125 times P hat 1 is 84. And we got 105. And we're going to do 125 times 1 minus 0.84. And we're going to end up getting 20. Greater than or equal to 10. Okay to use the normal approx. All right. Then we come over here and we're going to have to go N1 or N2, P hat 2, N2 times 1 minus P hat 2. And N2 is 150. And P hat 2 was 72%. And that equals 108. And when I multiply that, I end up getting 42. And that's also greater than or equal to 10. So, okay to use the normal approx. All right. Now we get to write our formula and plug in and do all of that. So our formula. Um, hold on a second. Make sure I'm not skipping anything. Good. So here we go. Formula P hat 1 minus P hat 2 plus or minus C star. P hat 1 times 1 minus P hat 1 over N1 plus P hat 2 times 1 minus P hat 2 over N2. And I'm not going to make the same mistake I did last time where I didn't have enough room. Now, these are already as decimals, so I'm going to go ahead and use the 84% and the 72%. Just because it'd be a lot easier than using a fraction here since it's already been given to me. So 0.84 minus 0.72 plus or minus. Okay, we got to calculate Z star. All right, they wanted a 90%. So the second VARS inverse norm, parenthesis, 1 minus 0 0.90, close parenthesis, divided by 2, mean is 0, standard deviation of 1. And I end up getting 1.6448. 1.6448. A really big long radical. And for p hat 1, we had 0.84. This is 1 minus 0.84 over. By the way, make sure you have all your ones. Make sure you don't leave off a, a, a number because I'll count it wrong. And our sample size in this case was 125 plus 0.72 times 1 minus 0.72 all over 150. All right. Now that we've plugged that in, because that's P hat 1, P hat 2, Z star, P hat 1, 1 minus P hat 1 over N1, P hat 2 minus times 1 minus P hat 2 over N2. Now we plug that in. We're going to scroll way down on the calculator stat test to proportion Z interval. Once again, that's letter B. 
And I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and 0 0.84 times 125. And I get a whole number. Let's just say it was a decimal, 105.1. All right? I just made it a decimal just for fun, even though it wasn't. And let's just say X2, I multiplied it out. I went 0 0.72 times the 150. Oh, I got a nice whole number. I left it there in a confidence level. And here's what happens if you have a decimal anywhere up there other than the confidence level. It gives you an error, and you have no idea what it's talking about, radians and degrees, nothing. doesn't make sense. So if you multiply and you end up with a decimal, you're going to have to round. So this needs to be a two-proportion Z interval. So this is 105.1. So we said this was, so the closest number to 105.1 is just plain old 105. So we round. And the reason it has to be a whole number is you can't have 0.1 nurses. You have to have every nurse. Have, when you're counting them, they're going to be a whole number. You, only, you don't have partial people. All right? So with proportions, everything has to be a whole. Uh, excuse me. The X's and N's have to be whole. X's and N's have to be whole when you're working with proportions. So now I have my um, the 105. And just in case you're curious, that was 0.84 times 125. So my N times my proportion is 105. And I go ahead and calculate it, and there's my interval 0 0.0391, 0 0.2009. So this is my interval 0 0.0391, 0 0.2009. So what are we? Well, we are 90% confident that the true, what are we looking for? Not population proportion, a population difference in proportion, population Difference in proportion of satisfied nurses working. And by the way, so this is what this is what you have to add difference in proportions and this satisfied nurses working that came from our definitions above and then what order do we subtract we went the day shift you got to tell me day shift minus the night shift lies within the interval point zero three nine one and oops point zero three nine one comma point two zero zero nine. So we are 90% confident the true population difference in proportions of satisfied nurses working the day shift minus the night shift lies within the interval 0 0.0391 and 0 0.2009. Super important that you give me this. So basically, we always need that we are 90% confident. That's di no, nothing new. True population. And then we need difference in proportions of satisfied of whatever it is we're talking about, in this case, satisfied nurses working in the order that we subtracted, lie within the interval point of .2009. All right, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.